Last time on Delightful Travelers, we checked out the bustling city of Naples and ate at the oldest pizzeria in the world. In this video, we'll be visiting a brand new region in Italy that we've never been to before, Puglia. We're told this area has beautiful beaches, charming towns, and that less tourists visit this part of the country. I'm Trevor, and this is Anna. Welcome to the final episode of our South of Italy series. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the like button to follow along on our full-time travel adventure and to see where we will end up next. An extra thank you to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Now, let's go explore. I'm on my way now. I cannot believe this is our last video here in Italy already. Where did the time go? I know, it's been in our world a few weeks that we've been here and this is one of our last <laughs> days here, but we're ending it in a really, really oh, yeah. unique spot. I'm very curious if you guys have ever even seen a video on the beautiful Puglia region. I think it was only a couple of years ago when I even first heard of this place and I only see like a picture popping up here and there. It's very, very underrated. Some might even call it a secret. There are, of course, lots of people around, but not nearly as some of the other like really really popular places here in Italy and I think when I did started to see pictures coming up one of them was of the place that's right next to me just wait for it oh my word what on earth are we looking at so just look at this beach down here it's basically like carved into the cliffs it is very busy it's September I'm sure as the season goes on it gets quite a bit quieter but just look at it the beaches in this area are known for these cliffs and these old towns combine those and it is perfection we're on our way down to the beach just to kind of show you guys what it looks like and take a look at this giant bridge we're about to walk under that if you're wondering where we are we are in a little beach town let's call it a beach town or an old town called Polignano Amere we're very close to the town we're staying in which is called Monopoly it's only like a seven minute train right away we'll be taking you down there later but first we got to go check out this beach well this is just wild you can see those cliffs up that way and way up this way but we haven't actually seen the beach yet it's like a fun little walk where it's kind of a surprise at the end, even though we have sort of seen it. I'm probably gonna completely butcher the name. It's called something like Lama Manocele. Sorry guys, if you're Italian, I'm sure I did a terrible job. Anyway, something that you might know if you come to the Mediterranean is that some beaches are sandy, but a lot of them are pebbly. You can't really tell this from far away, but it's definitely a pebble beach. It's actually really funny to watch people try to get in and out of the water. So if you're coming here, bring water shoes for sure. Also, it's really, really windy today. We would have loved to put the drone up, but I just don't think it's possible. But I think a lot of days it's quite calm based on pictures that I've seen. It's pretty cool because you can also see the bridge where we just came from. And there's beach clubs down here. But speaking of that bridge, check this out. <laughs> This is awesome. I'm really digging this town so far. We are just walking through the walls into the old city and you might think it's kind of funny the fact that I said it's not that busy around here. Well, this town is very busy. I think the old town itself is pretty small so it gets kind of congested. When we get to Monopoly later in the video, you're going to notice that it's not nearly as busy. Well, another old town in another old city and another European square. It just does not get old. But here's what I think is going on right now. There's way more people here than we expected. I'm pretty sure we hooked a cruise ship. I don't know if cruise ships come here. They might go to Barrie, which is the closest city, and you can train here very easily. But I think that's what's going on. Also, we hooked a wedding or something over this way. So Trevor was just talking about cruise ships, and I don't know too much about that. But one thing that this region is really popular for and that a lot of people come here is to take ferries to other countries. You can go to Greece, you can go to Albania. I think you can make your way up to Venice. Most of them leave from either Bari or Brindisi, I believe. And maybe further in the video, we'll be talking a little bit more about that because as we already mentioned, this is going to be our last Italy video. So I know we said it is our last video here, but if this video is the first video that you kind of picked us up on, we do have something like seven or eight other Italian videos in this series, and we went to some incredible, incredible places. It's honestly so romantic in this town, and it's so easy to get lost in here. We absolutely love it, but speaking of what we love, these kind of views. Now you can see the beach where we were earlier. We're so high up and it is absolutely epic up here. There's quite the current and quite the waves down there. As I said earlier, I don't think it's like this all the time, but maybe someone can correct me. It's interesting, we could see a cave that kind of connected from the beach and we were wondering where it goes, but you probably can't see this, but it actually goes out to the water. People are walking around and then jumping in. I also see people walking along the edge. I don't think you'll be able to see that either, but we're being hit by waves. I don't know, maybe seems like maybe not the best idea. Speaking Speaking of things that are maybe not such a great idea, something I was reading about this town is that it's really famous for cliff jumping 
jumping or cliff diving competitions. I can actually see a guy down there. I don't know if he's gonna jump or if he's just there for the view, but I'm not next. Do you guys wanna go next? <laughs> I can't even imagine jumping into this sea off of cliffs like that. No, thank you. <laughs> when you're up this high on these cliffs, you can really, really appreciate what you're looking at. It's so cool to have this old town right next to the ocean on these cliffs. Yeah, and I think that's why, well, this town in particular is oh so popular. Even this region, as we said, is kind of a secret. Why do we it think is, it is such a secret? Good like question. First of all, the Puglia region is in the heel of the boot when you think about the shape of Italy. And because of that, I think maybe it's a little bit more tucked away or people consider it maybe harder to get to, even though it's not that hard to get to. Uh, the main city here is Bari, but that's not really a big touristic destination. You probably don't think of it as a place to go to that's probably not high on your list of places to go to like Rome or Florence. It's also very chilled out here. Now we've been to a few different regions here in Italy so far. We started in Sicily. Let us tell you that Sicily is very busy, especially if you go in August like we did. Then we did go to some smaller kind of touristic towns like Taormina and places like that which were a little more chilled but we ended up in Naples which was very very busy packed with people Naples honestly is a wild animal so now we're here it's a nice contrast and we just like that it's a little more laid back We have just come over to a restaurant called Il Grotino. Got ourselves a glass of wine because it is one of our last days here in Italy. This, I think, is a, a wine from this region in Puglia, but I didn't find out what the what the actual wine type is. But it does smell lovely. Let's go cheers there. Cheers. Cheers. The dish we are going to try today is also something regional. It's a type of pasta. It's called orecchette. Basically, translate to, to little ears because of the shape of them. It's also topped with um, some tomato sauce and some burrata, which I didn't realize is also from this region, but it is. It's something that you commonly see in a lot of Italian restaurants. You guys have probably tried it before, but if not, it's basically made of mozzarella and cream. So it ends up being just like a super creamy type of mozzarella. I got a bite all loaded up here, so it's time to just go for it. Down the hatch. Well, that is just super fresh, and can I point out how fun this is to eat? These little uh, things of pasta that are shaped like ears. I know that sounds weird, but let me assure you they're very good. But what I do notice right away is the freshness of that tomato sauce. You can't beat that when you're here in Italy. Factor in the cheese as well. It makes for a great combo. We never eat this kind of thing for lunch, but hey, we have to, you guys. It's our last time here, at least for now. What a way to go out and with some delicious wine. Right, right here, the wine's from Puglia. I like that too. Look at the size of the cheese that I got in this one. In this one. It probably goes without saying, but you cannot beat pasta here in Italy. It is cooked perfectly al dente. Very, very simple tomato sauce. It's really all about that cheese, which is super creamy. And of course, like Trevor said, it's really, really fun to eat the pasta. Now, I'm sure some of you have been wondering how we're getting around while we're in the uh, Puglia region here. And we've not rented a car because there's another way you can get around, huh? Yeah, the trains here in Italy are just so easy and convenient. Yeah. They pretty much go to every single town, at least some of the major towns, most of the major oh. towns. Then you just hop right on, you buy your ticket, hop on, hop off. Oh. So, so simple. I know. We're from Canada. I so wish we had these kind of trains in Canada. They literally go everywhere, and we're about to get one now. All right, first thing we got to do here is get some tickets. Here we go. <laughs> Buy tickets. We are going to Monopoly. Yeah, we'll do one way. It's only a few euros to do this. You could either pay with uh, cash or you could use a card. So it is convenient. And two. Got our tickets? Yes. Do we need to validate them? Yeah, yeah, we do. So they might not know what that is, huh? Validation? Yeah, so sometimes you can get a ticket that is like for a specific train, and then sometimes it's just good for like the day, so you have to validate it to prove that you basically used it, I guess, that you used the ticket. It's good for four hours after you validate it. <laughs> and don't worry guys, that's not that's not our train going. At least I, I mean, hope it's not. <laughs> we're awfully calm if that is our train. Well, just like that, we are in Monopoly. It was only like, what, seven minutes? It 
five to seven minutes. It feels like you just get on and then you get off again. It's yeah, you, you do have to wear these masks though, and they're a specific kind of like an N, kind of like what we think is N95 masks. So. Maybe by the time you're watching this, that rule will be gone, but at the moment you have to be wearing them. True. So you might have heard us say the name Monopoly. That is the name of the town, and yes, it's the same like, similar name to the board game. But yep, it's just spelled with an I instead of a Y at the end. Yes, but it's it's similar vibe. It feels a lot like the last time we were just in. There is an old town, it's walled, it's really, really beautiful. It looks very, very similar. There's yeah. some beaches around. The town here, I think, is bigger. I read that there's a population here of 50,000, and in Polignano <laughs> Amare, there are about 15. So it feels like to me Monopoly is a small city, maybe a really large town. You guys can let us know because I'm not sure what the classification is, but uh, it's going to look a lot like the last town in just a few moments. We're just by the train station now, making our way back into the old part of the city. We just came over to one of our favorite little cafes in the town here, and we got a Cafe Fredo. Take a look at this guy. This is iced coffee, but there's something unique in this that we're not used to getting in Canada, at least that is. So this, of course, is a cold coffee, but this specifically is basically ice. It is coffee ice. A big ball of coffee that you put in here to make it extra cold. But this is really dark and my hunch is it's going to be a little strong. I think the idea here is actually to break this up if I can figure it out. <laughs> it's pretty loud in here as well. There's it some uh, background noise and there's music so we need to talk over that so we don't get a copyright strike. We don't want that do we? <laughs> we do not want that. It's also a lot of fun to eat because you have like little chunks in there. You get a Spoon. I'm gonna actually drink this, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the proper way is. Is it to like, do you drink it or do you actually use the spoon? Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> but I do love the idea of this. Why don't we do this at home? Like you actually freeze the coffee to make it an iced coffee. Like it seems very, very basic and easy, but this is the first time I've ever seen it. Also, can we talk about the taste? It's super rich coffee. It's so good, so strong, so flavorful. Almost has like a chocolatey flavor to it, even though I know there's no chocolate in there, but it's just so rich. Uh, definitely definitely needed that caffeine kick and let me tell you it was strong <laughs> yeah, but especially after having pasta for lunch which we don't normally do we especially needed the coffee yeah you guys can probably tell so we're in I'll call it the new part of town it might not look like it but it's very pastel very colorful a little different than the last now once we get to the old town it's gonna look different but there's one thing we notice about this town it's not just here we're just not used to it everything shuts down in the afternoon. Yeah, something to be prepared for. It's basically from like 1 to 1.30 until about 5. Almost everything is closed. I, like, okay, being from Canada, and I'm sure a lot of uh, people from the States as well, we know there's siestas over here, but we've been to places where there's not, but this is a town that But we noticed it. I remember in Spain it happened a lot, and then like Argentina as yeah. well. I don't remember it last time we were in Italy. I but know. But here, maybe it's a, a south of Italy thing. It's like very, very common. Yeah, even the grocery stores. To get food and drinks, they, they're closed in the afternoon. I don't know. I wonder if people that work there, like work in the morning, go home and take the afternoon off, and then go back and work at night. We're curious. Let us know. Seriously, it is so quiet around here. I feel like I have to whisper to you guys, but we're at our place now. We're gonna show you, give you a tour. We're on the ground level, as you can probably tell. We weren't sure if like we wanted to book a place like this, but we lucked out, and you'll see why in a second. It's a great little spot. Well, welcome to the inside of our home here. It's pretty deceiving when you're outside, right? You don't know what's behind these doors, but we're in the living room right now. This is a very, very big space. There is a TV right behind me. We have a place to do some work or a table for eating, but I have it set up as an office right now. We also have a big couch as well. I'm curious how many of you noticed the uh, camera tripod holding up the MacBook Air charger. Here we are again. I've had this problem before. <laughs> I know. We seem to have this issue wherever we go in, well, in Italy so far. I'm sure as we continue, we'll have it all over the place. It's just that uh, it can't can't seem to hold up our chargers and so, I don't know. What do you do? But this is the bedroom area, super comfy bed. This must be a brand new place because I feel like all the stuff is new. It feels fresh and like basically unused. Some TV over there, some storage there. Mm -hmm. Behind you. There is an AC, very, very necessary. Although it stays pretty cool in here. <laughs> over this way, you actually have like a utility room. It's almost outside, but it's covered. It's neat. I wonder if it's meant to be like an outside space, mm -hmm. but they turned it into like a washer and storage kind of space. We do have a bathroom is this way. The bathroom is this way. I'll take you guys in here because it is a little tight. So yeah, you can see toilet. Of course you have a bidet. A little tiny sink does the trick. Mirror, hey guys. And you also have, well, a walk-in shower. It's 
looks small, but it's actually kind of big for what we've seen so far. Yeah, we've had some pretty tiny showers in the past. One thing we haven't showed you yet is the kitchen, which is kind of on the other side of this wall. Yeah, we'll walk this way. It's a, it's a long walk, so you can see, hopefully this gives you a sense of the size of this place. You have to duck here because I've hit my head many a times. This place actually reminds me a little bit of like a cave house in Santorini. We stayed in one of those a few years ago when we were there. And it has the same kind of feel like the big ceilings and like coming, you almost feel like you're underground, but you're mm -hmm. not. I'm sure they can tell there's a big echo in here as well. Yeah, it's like, just look at <laughs> like this round ceiling. It's really, really interesting. It's all like super concrete. Yeah. We have a sink and there's actually a four burner cooktop. Yeah, and an oven in here as well. And then there's like a, not a huge fridge, but not tiny either. Yeah, it does the trick. And there's another one of those kind of outdoor rooms. Yeah, so this is like a garbage basically <laughs> room right there. So if you're wondering how much this place costs, it is 70 euro per night. Not too bad given we're like a five minute walk to the old town here in Monopoly. If you want to stay here, we'll put the link in the description. You guys always ask us, so the description box is right down there if you're on your desktop or your laptop, right down here. So you'll get the link, click that and you'll get this place. But now we're going to head down to the old town and take you guys with us. We are almost in the old town. I guess just outside the walled city. Really neat, there's actually a moat here. At least we thought it was a moat. We kept walking by it and thinking it looks kind of like a moat. There is actually a thing here saying it's a moat in the old walls that date back to the 16th century. How cool is this? I mean, look. <laughs> it's so old and there's like a playground yeah, down there. Yeah, a playground in the old moat. <laughs> What a good use of space. Well done, Monopoly. Well, we've now come across the main beach here in Monopoly. It's not too busy at the moment because it's a little later in the day, but you can see all these people hanging out on the rocks. And of course, you can see that walled old city. Remember earlier in the video when I said another old town, another old city? Well, here we are. This place is pretty special because this beach is right here. And the main part of the town is just that way. Well, into the old city we go. What an impressive little town this is. And it's very white, very different than the colorful buildings or the pastel buildings back up in the yeah, new town. Yeah, it's funny how in the new, new town, I guess you'd call it, it's very pastel-y, cute shutter, different colors. And they clearly have a color palette, but then when you come in here, <laughs> it's a lot more white. Like directly ahead of me, which you can't see, is a white building with blue shutters, so it reminds me of the Cicladis. But then other buildings are more off-white color, which makes me think of Croatia, like that brotch rock I know. that they have. It's interesting. We're not too far from those areas, but it's really is a blend of like Italy and definitely some places in Greece. Mm -hmm. Feels very Mediterranean. Different Mediterranean places kind of yeah. combined. And totally different than the rest of Italy. At least the places we've been in Italy, which is a lot of the country actually. So while all the other cities do umbrella streets, Monopoly has done a hat street. We did try to ask someone to see if there's a story behind it and they said no, it just looks good. <laughs> I, I found that really funny. We were waiting for this. I thought it would be something really interesting, like some no. big story behind you know, some woman that loved hats that was from the city or something, but no. Probably not. And it's not just this street that has the hats. Yeah, That's the cool thing. Them. That's what I call a tight squeeze. It's weird. There was no cars in here the last few days. There's not been. I don't know if people are coming back from work this time <laughs> of day, but we did ask also a local and he said just people that live in here can actually drive in here, but ooh, that'd be hard. We'll just play a game of follow the Fiat through the alleys. <laughs> you see everybody getting out of the way. <laughs> this is way too fun. I'm not going to lie. We are a little bit lost at the moment. <laughs> Look at that bike. A funny little electric bike. I know, that's what's so fun. This is about Europe in general. There's all these ways to get around. Look at like, that bike. What is that bike? There's someone coming up this way on a bicycle. I'll uh, <laughs> see a tuk tuk not too far ahead of us. I know, shops are opening. Most shops are closed until like five o'clock. They reopen, but yeah, pretty cool spot. Well, this is uh, pretty cool. Found a tunnel leads to uh, this beautiful uh, little bay. Yeah, I love how the old walled city just has these like random little openings and then you get nice views like this. This is cool because now you can see we're on the other side of the wall and there's all these boats out there. They're all blue. I wonder yeah, if they're... Do you think there's like a rule that the boats have to be <laughs> painted blue? Well, the other thing is, are they fishing boats? They, look like they must be. Boats. They must be, yeah. Honestly, we are so glad we came to the Puglia region. We weren't quite sure if we were going to come here though. At one point we were kind of on the fence going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, there is actually a purpose that we did come to this <laughs> yeah. region for, which you're gonna see in at least in a minute or so. <laughs> yeah, later in the video, we're here for a reason. Stay tuned because you will see we're going somewhere. We have to 
let's say we have to catch something. That's the best way to say it. Now, here's here's the question. If you're new around here, we've been talking about. Well, I should say we're looking for places where we could potentially live. And is yeah, this one of them? We're gonna start slowly, slowly sl mm -hmm. uh, travel. Trying to travel slower. Yeah, we need if to we slow can. down. We have not been doing that lately. We have been but failing. We're going to. I'm sure some of you have been calling us out, but we got to Italy mm -hmm. and we got a little excited. But yes. now in the next series, it's going to happen. We're slowing down. But here's the thing: could we live here in Puglia? I'm on the fence. On the it's fence. Really, really beautiful. The mm -hmm. beaches. I mean, I think we just saw like a tiny little sliver of the crazy beaches yeah. that are here, and we also only saw a little tiny bit of Puglia. Like this is a big region. It is. And I know you guys are probably going to call us out also for not <laughs> seeing more of it, which we'd love to do. So. I, I like that it seems to be like a collection of towns and and probably even villages. Mm -hmm. And the train seems to be easy to get around. I'm sure if you rent a car. It is. Yeah. I think so, if we did come back and stayed for a while, we'd have to rent a car and go visit yeah. some like places a little bit more off the beaten path. But places. I will be honest. I don't think there's enough of a, a variety of a cuisine here for us. I know we're in Italy, don't, we love Italian food, but we're people that can't eat the same kind of food every day. Yeah. And it is kind of tricky to find non-Italian restaurants. when you do, it's not that good from what we've tried. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, we're going to wrap up here in Monopoly. Don't, don't tune out of the video yet. We're going somewhere very soon and we're going to take you with us because remember, we, ha we have to catch something. We have to catch something. Well, we are now aboard a ferry, as you guys can probably tell by the footage. We are leaving Italy right now, and we're on our way to another country. A different country. So basically, I said before, I think I said before in, earlier in the video, that there are kind of two possibilities for mm. ferries that you can take from where we were in yeah. Puglia. One basically to Albania, which Ooh. is a country that's been high on our list for a long time, mm -hmm. and we've never been to before, which is big, you know. <laughs> exciting thing for us or Greece Whoa. which is one as you some of you guys might know one of our favorite countries ever so it's like Greece Albania Greece Albania <laughs> <laughs> oh I know so this was a, a tough choice but it's it's happening very very soon now if you guys are wondering like what this room is we did manage to get our own room when we came aboard this ship it was a uh, it was less expensive to upgrade basically yeah, in person. Yeah, pro, pro tip for you, we bought, just bought our ticket, yeah. regular tickets online, and then when we got on board, we were like, I wonder if it's uh, that much more to like upgrade to a room. It was su super expensive online, Very. and it wasn't too much more on the ship, so. Yeah, it just made sense. We're uh, on a, like a 10 to uh, 12 hour ferry ride to where we're going, so we were like, okay, we've been traveling all day, let's do it, so. This is going to be really exciting, and uh, you're probably wondering, well, tell us, tell us where you're going. Not just We're going to have to wait for the next video. We're going to leave you on a cliffhanger this time. I don't think we've ever done that to you guys, but in this video, we're going to leave you kind of on the edge of your seat because we're going to show you in the next video. It's going to be so exciting. Pretty soon, I'm looking out a window behind you guys. We're going to see some, hmm, land. some land coming up, and that will be the next destination, huh? It will. I'm so excited. I know. Now, if you guys got this far in the video, Trevor and Anna, delightful travelers, thank you all for watching. Hit subscribe. Leave us a comment. Heck, share the video. Join us as we travel across the world full time now. We're really excited about that. And we want to say an extra thanks to our patrons and our channel members, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And I think what we didn't uh, also didn't say yet was oh. the next destination. We're going to be staying for a while and slow yeah. traveling a little bit. So that's something to look forward to as well. I know we've kind of hinted at it, but I haven't really done it yet. <laughs> Yeah, we've, uh, we're supposed to be slow traveling, but we got a little excited in Italy, as we said, and yeah, now it's time to kind of slow down. We need a break. We you, do. If you, guys, you guys are always like, when are you going to slow down? It's happening now. Yeah. Just, you know, on, uh, in another country. Mm -hmm. we, so that's going to be fun. So here we are. Thank you again for watching, guys. We're almost there. I can see land now. So in the next video, get ready. All right, guys, that's it. From Italy, I guess, or I guess the middle of the Mediterranean. Wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.